Hi, friends. I'm just gonna get right into it. As many of you might know, John and I are currently in the house hunting process right now. Being the huge planner that I am, I couldn't help but dream up all sorts of designs and creative projects for our future home, including making a real-life greenhouse. Since that obviously can't happen right now, I'm just going to make a miniature one instead. This project took me a good 20 hours or so, during which time, John kept wondering why his wife was hiding in her office all day, making little furniture things. So yeah, my husband's judgment aside, I actually had a wonderful time with this project. The DIY kit itself was forty dollars and was, I thought, pretty easy to understand. If any of you guys want to try it out, I'll leave a link in my description below. While making this miniature greenhouse, I kept remembering those mission projects that we had in grade school. A lot of elementary schools in California assign mission projects, where fourth graders have to build these mission-style churches from scratch. Now that I think about it, that's a pretty darn difficult project for a fourth grader to complete. I think even adults would have trouble with it. I remember when I was in fourth grade, and it became time for our mission project. And I was so excited to make something awesome. My parents gathered a handful of supplies, which inevitably consisted of cardboard boxes, my dad's leftover paint from Home Depot, posters from the 99 cent store, and some twigs that they found in the yard. I got busy and made the most out of what I had. Keep in mind, I was nine years old. The project turned out as well as any nine-year-old could do. And my mom was super proud of me for doing it all by myself, so I felt good. Then came the day when we all had to turn it in. I was super excited that morning and couldn't wait to see everyone's mission projects. So I strolled into school, proudly holding my giant mission all by myself because I didn't trust my mom to hold it for me. It was that precious to me. But then, as soon as I walked into the classroom. My stomach absolutely sank. Atop everyone's desks were beautiful styrofoam churches, not cardboard like mine, but styrofoam. Most of them had real moss, tiny little trees, benches, realistic roofing, and even miniature humans. I looked back down on my project, and what initially felt like something I was proud of. Now looked like a complete raggedy mess compared to what I saw. As if to add insult to injury, my class bully let out a little snicker when he saw my project. I also noticed that my teacher was going around complimenting everyone's beautiful missions, but when it came to mine, she just told me to write my name on it and put it on my desk. I ended up getting a C on that project, a C. After trying my hardest and utilizing all the tools that our family could afford at the time, I think my mom felt really bad seeing me cry that night. But I was just crushed. My parents didn't know what Michaels or Hobby Lobby were. None of us even knew that mission kits existed in craft stores. Yet, rather than receiving grace for these clear disadvantages, It felt like we were mocked and punished for them. That was my first memory of being acutely aware of our socioeconomic difference. It was the first time in my life that I felt less than because of what I did not have. That experience impacted me so much that I often found myself trying to overcompensate even years afterwards. I tried to be perfect in all the art projects I was assigned. And I struggled with this perfectionism for years. Because of all the practice and the pressure, I actually became pretty good at fine art. But I never just did it for fun. Art was actually a stressor for me, but I still made time to paint or draw something from time to time, because being good at it gave me a greater sense of worth. What a sad way to go about life, right? I didn't even realize any of this until I sought therapy for the first time in 2015. Through therapy, 
I learned to separate my worth from my skills and accomplishments. With every insightful session, I uncovered wounds I didn't even know I had. For the first time since that fourth grade incident, I started doing arts and crafts again, just for the fun of it. The pressure of being perfect slowly melted away, and I was able to find joy and contentment in the ordinary. To me, that's where God is, right in the everyday, while we're not doing anything particularly interesting or impressive. When we're just still and present, that's when I'm most aware of how much He loves me and is pleased with me. I believe it all worked out according to His purpose for me. Without my trauma, I wouldn't have sought a therapist. Without my angel therapist, I wouldn't have my online ministry today. In the end, God's name is glorified.
If you're having any trouble enjoying life at all, I recommend seeking counseling or therapy. Trust me, you're going to discover a lot of wounds you didn't even know you had. Since we're in a pandemic right now and it's not so easy to seek in person therapy, a go to platform of mine is BetterHelp. They're a trustworthy online platform that uses a thorough questionnaire to match you with your own licensed professional therapist. BetterHelp is not meant to replace in person therapy, but in my experience, it's a great first step if you've never reached out for help before. Once you're matched with a therapist that fits your criteria, you can either chat with them online or call them. I personally recommend getting on the phone with them to really maximize your time together. And since therapy is such a personal topic, people usually try out a few different therapists before they find someone they really click with. That's why BetterHelp allows you to easily change therapists at any time free of charge. BetterHelp is available worldwide, so if you want to try it out, you can go to betterhelp.com slash Anne for 10% off your first month. I hope you were encouraged by my story. May this year be a year full of growth, love, and joy for you. And may this greenhouse project bring you as much peace as it's brought me.